Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. I'm Sean. And I'm Ian, and this is the only podcast that says. Yeah. I'm Batman. <laughs> nice. Yeah. How are you, sir? <sighs> it's been a wild week, Mr. Ted. It has. It certainly has. I'll start with the the awful news. Um, our Aunt Bonnie died. Yeah. Yeah. Funerals on Monday. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it sucks. Sweet soul. Yeah. I was thinking about it today. Mm. And I always talk about how, like, the basis of podcast is, is the smod cast, like between Kevin Smith and Scott Mosier, and, mm. you know, and, you know, one of the key components of my geekdom slash nerddom slash fandom is, you know, my father. But I was really thinking about it today. Reflecting, if you will. Sure. And I, I think the real basis of this podcast is the conversations my dad, Aunt Bonnie, Pap Coon, and even Uncle John would have about the stuff they were reading. Yeah. Like, you know, hey, I read the new Dragon Riders of Pern book. You know, they... They were talking about the stuff that they were reading and the stuff that they were passing around to each other mm-hmm. and the stuff that they were borrowing off of each other and like hours of conversation that they would have about these things that they were reading and watching and enjoying. Yeah. And I was too young to participate because I hadn't read Dune yet. I hadn't read Dragon Riders yet. I hadn't read, you know, all this stuff. But yet... That's where it started, probably. Yeah. And so, like, deep down, like, we talk about where, where the roots of this podcast really reach. And it's those conversations that are probably the heart and soul of what this show actually is. Right. Like, I just just discovered it today, though. Like, th- really thinking about it. Like, yeah, those conversations are the conversations you and I try to have, but just in front of a microphone. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so, in many ways, yeah, we discussed it when when Pap Coon died. You know, he was a largely responsible for nurturing this inside of us, this, our our fandom, our geekdom, our yeah, yeah, our nerddom. And she was just as well, like you know, along with your mom. Yeah. You know, your Aunt Joni was part of those conversations too a lot of times. Like, you know, that's all the stuff that they were reading. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Bond stuff. They were reading the Bond books. You yeah. know, like all, all Louis Lamore. Yeah, we don't read the Westerns, but that was a big conversation amongst them all. They all love Louis Lamore. Yeah. You know. And it was just stuff like that that And the movies they saw. In the movies they saw. Yeah. Yeah. So like it was like all these things were the things that they talked about. <laughs> and that carried on to us too as well because after family dinners a lot of the times when we started driving the cousins went to go see movies yeah we all went to go see movies again on the holidays yeah you know what I mean so, like Thanksgiving tradition was we'd all pack up and go see a movie yeah 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 we all saw Attack of the Clones together yeah it's just crazy yeah you know yeah, so it's like it's stuff like that that you know, but I, I was thinking about it like those those conversations that have in the the living room. Yeah. You know, or in the summertime on the back porch. Yeah. Or you know, just them talking or, you know, even in Aunt Jane's for Labor Day. Mm-hmm. You know, if they weren't playing volleyball, they were talking yeah. about the stuff they were reading. Mm-hmm. And so deep down on un- Unconsciously, until today, I really thought about it. And I thought that's really the heart of where all this starts. Yeah, you know, those conversations. Yeah. So she'll be missed. She will be missed. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, um, what have you been up to? Uh. Working, yeah. Um, that's about it. No, I <laughs> watching a little bit of TV. Um, I watched quite a bit this week. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. 
I watched um, the new movie with George Clooney and um, excuse me. Oh my! Um, Get the burps. Julia Roberts. Okay. Um, which I thought was real good. I mean, it's good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. Yeah, they got good chemistry. Yeah. Plus, I, mean, I like both actors. So. Yeah, I've been doing that shit for years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. It was good. It, it's not as good as the trailer leads it to be. Yeah. But it was a good movie. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Yeah. So. No problem. I knew. I I got what I expected out of it. Right. And then I watched. A fucked up movie called The Menu. Oh, I, this is on my with, list of shit to Ralph watch. With Ralph Yeah. This is on my list of shit I've got to watch. Man. I'm not going to say anything about it. Yeah. But. I've heard it's very, very good. Holy shit. Yeah. Like. I, at one point, I looked over. I was like, was he up for an Academy Award for this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Yeah. If he wasn't, he should have been. Yeah. I've heard it's very, very good. <clears throat> yeah. It absolutely takes you on a journey. Yeah. With food. Yeah. Um, and, of course, more than that. Yeah. But it's amazing. Yeah. Like, was Amos in it. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Very good movie. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah, I've heard it's fantastic. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So, yeah, I watched that. Uh, I did watch Picard. Ah, yes, the first episode, first episode of Picard. And I liked it. It was fantastic. I couldn't believe I liked it. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is good. Yeah. This is kind of what I've been waiting for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I even like Riker in it. I was like, wow, that's cool that he's in it. I yeah. don't want him to be, but I like his involvement. Right. Like, it's not too corny. Yeah. And he's being Riker. Yeah. You know? Um, Crusher looked amazing. Oh, yeah. What a badass. I was like, oh, my God, for real? Yeah. And so, like, I was like, at a, I was at a point where I was kind of like, oh, is this... Is fucking Jordy gonna come in? Like, I, you know, in the beginning, I was like, oh god, they're all coming back, and it's just gonna be this whole send off with them all on the ship and corny line. It's gonna be like Star Trek Four. Yeah. And, uh, but it was, it was like a really well done episode. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I agree. Um, so hopefully it continues on that vein. Yeah. You know. Right. Um, because I liked it. Like last season, I couldn't. Yeah, you struggled. I, to get through I struggled it. to get through that fucking yeah. thing. Um, but this kind of started the way the first season kind of started. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I liked it. I dug it, man. I was I was all in. I was like, wow, this is really good. Like I always wish they had done a Riker series. Right. Like I liked Riker. Yeah. Um. And so I thought, like, I mean, I, and, you know, with him going to the tight, and I thought, well, here's a great opportunity where I can just do a series with him. And apparently they had one in development at one point, and they scrapped it. But I, I like, I always liked the character of Will Riker a lot. Mm. He was like the Kirk of the Enterprise D. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. You know, but, um, it, so, like, Having him along for the ride, I was like, "Oh, I like that. I like, you know, th this this is kind of cool." And um, but I thought it told a very like it's it's telling a very interesting story to start. Yeah. And I, I even like like the, the even like Rafi with being deep undercover and you know everything that she's going through that that looked very interesting yeah, and yeah. You know, like i was just like okay this looks i'm very excited by this and like i'm hoping the rest of the se the season 
keeps at this pace. Right. You know what I mean? Like, or, or gets better. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, yeah, I, 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 I've, I'm very intrigued by this, and I'm intrigued to see where it goes. Yeah. Like, I, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Did that. Watch that. I'll watch 1923. And I think that's it. I, uh, I went down. <laughs> I was on fucking the phone. Yeah. And this Lord of the Rings thing popped up. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, so I read it, you know. Yeah. And yeah, went back to TV. You know, right on the TV. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah so I watched Fellowship. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then I started Two Towers and I fell yeah. asleep. But uh, that's a lot of rings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And and the and Two Towers was the extended version. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's not the two uh, two and a half hour version. It's yeah, like it knocked four me hour out. Version. It knocked me out in the first like twenty five minutes. Yeah. I was like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, so anyway, it's. I think I just saw an anniversary picture. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just fucking put it on. Yeah. yeah fuck it. <laughs> I couldn't find anything else. You know yeah. what I mean? <clears throat> so yeah, that, that's about it for me. So I finished the terminal list. Okay. That was really good. Yeah. I did not see that ending coming. Yeah. But it was really, really, really well done. Yeah. Like, I was like, at the end of it, I was like, I had to take a minute. Yeah. yeah. And kind of like, you know, like, like yeah, the yeah. exhale. You know, like, wow. But that was really fucking good. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'll i tell you, like, if you're into that, like, if you're into, like, Jack Reacher. He can act, dude. Yeah. If you're into Jack Ryan, this is a show worth checking out because it's, it's in that same vein, but... Much more brutal. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's good. It was really good. It was really fucking good. <laughs> Even though I didn't go back and rewatch it. I yeah. know. What, I I remember the ending, so yeah. I, I know. I made it through at some point. Yeah. But I watched that, and then I followed that up with Good Omens. Good Omens. It's the one. It's got Michael Sheehan and uh, David Tennant. Oh yeah, we watched that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I it was on a couple years ago. It's like I'm finally just kind of getting around to like, hey, I need to watch this. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I knew I would. Yeah. I mean, it's it's Tennant, it's Sheehan, it's it's you know Neil Gaiman. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing here I don't like. Right. right. You know, um, it felt mm-hmm. very. In a way, it had the feel of kind of like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy a little bit. Yeah. Like, and I, I don't, and, and I mean that in a very good way. Like, it's a, to me, that's a compliment. Cause, but, but it, like, I, I don't know if it was just, that there was like, you know, God was narrating. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the, the, the guide does at points yeah, during yeah. like the, especially if you watch like the, the BBC 1980 miniseries with. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Restaurant at the End of the Universe. You know, there's always, like, blips of, like, you know, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy says. You know, and yeah, it yeah. gives you all this information that's completely superfluous but hysterical. <laughs> but, so I don't know if that was what gave me that that vibe of, like, this was kind of like Hitchhiker's. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you had this narration from God who would go back, like, a thousand years and explain something that happened then that's affecting now. Yeah, yeah. You know. So it was like it was that, that that odd thing, but it it still had like very much a a hitchhiker's feel to me, uh-huh. which I liked. Um, I mean, Tenant was great, Michael Sheen is great, you know. Like, I, I, there's nothing not to love about that show, right? Like, if you haven't watched it yet, if you're like me and have put it off for some reason, go watch it. Yeah, it's a good show. Well worth the price of admission. Mm-hmm. And I'm now watching. The Legend of of uh, Vox Machina. How's that? 
It's really good. Yeah, I didn't. I've been tempted, but just like, haven't gotten there. I have. I, I'll. I'll admit, I am not somebody who's ever watched or listened to a Critical Role podcast. Okay. Okay. Like, so I have no background with uh. them. However, like I saw the the trailers and the ads for it, mm. and I thought, well, this looks interesting. Sure. And it's mm. separate, but it's the same thing as what they were doing. Like I, I doing my research, apparently, like a lot of the storylines are based upon what they did on the mm-hmm. podcast. Okay. So, but it's animated, and it's very adult. Yeah. I'll tell you that now. Like. If you are somebody who's like, oh, it's a cartoon, but that doesn't... No. Okay. They drop motherfuckers like it's nobody's business, and there is a lot of gore. Yeah. And it's also, like, there, there's some scary shit in there, too. Like, I mean, you know, they, they do a whole undead thing that, you know, it's very, uh, like, reminiscent of something like out of a uh, <laughs> Ralph Band- Bashke fire and ice or something like yeah. it was like oh shit that's that's dark yeah, yeah. you know so I, I i dug it like I'm, I'm halfway through the second season at this point i think i, I really enjoyed the first season a lot mm. and the the second season's been just as enjoyable so highly recommend that as well okay that's what i've been watching that's what's uh had my attention if you will yeah yeah how about that Super Bowl? Oh my! What a game! I, I I quite enjoyed the game. So did I. Let me ask you the question: There was though. no fuckery until the end. I don't think there was any fuckery at the end. Well, not fuckery. I I'm very critical of of plays, and just I mean, to me, in that whole game, there was three plays that stood out to me. Mm-hmm. That stood out where I was like, "What?" You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um. One was the um, catch to the Eagles wide receiver. Yeah. He fully caught that ball. He went to make a move. Yeah. And he fucking got rocked. Yeah. And that ball came out. That was a fumble. I mean, I know he didn't take two steps, but but I mean, like, how much more possession can you have? That guy had possession. That guy wasn't fumbling the ball. The ball wasn't going anywhere. He rocked it. He sat it solid. He went to make the turn and got killed. I mean, a great tackle. Right. I So that stood out. Right. Number two, the pass to, I think it was the tight end on the outside where they called it a... Um, they called it a catch. And it, that was not a catch. That foot never came down after he got possession. There was no way. He had one foot in. They're saying for sure. They're saying the first foot was already down, and then the second foot. But he never had control at that right. point. On I get, that I first get what foot. you're saying. Like I question that's that. That's why he fucking ran so quick back onto the field because he knew right. it was bad. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like I, I thought, man, that's hard. But they, they were saying he, he fully had control of the ball when the first foot was down oh, up here. Yeah, like. So his right foot was down when he gained control. His left foot comes down, establishing the second foot, and then the right foot goes out of bounds. Yeah, I don't know about all yeah, that. Yeah, that's what that's how Mike Pereira was interpreting yeah. it. So I was like, okay. Um, and then of course the third was that Schuster. Yeah, holding or not holding. You know what I'm saying? Well, it was holding. Yeah, yeah. Um. Those are the three plays that stuck out. Right. But other than that, it was a fucking great game. Yeah. I honestly think that <laughs> I know they won, but Philly's Q probably should have got the MVP for that. Oh, I agree. He was fucking phenomenal. I agree. J- J- I mean, Jalen Hurts was like. It is tough to say. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it, it has to be extremely tough. To say when well, we scored thirty five points in the Super Bowl and lost, like nobody's ever been able to say that before, right? You know, and like I, I know people are like, "Oh, you can't make that that defensive holding call at the end of the game because you got to give Philly a chance." Well, no, no, you and, don't have to give him a chance. Right. I don't agree with that. Because here, here's my thing. This has always been my thing. 
If there is one thing I hate about the NHL, it is Stanley Cup playoff overtime rules. Yeah. Because the rule becomes, once that game goes to overtime, the unwritten rule is, unless there's blood, unless there's an extremely egregious penalty, yeah. it's like a you swallow match. that whistle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, those referees ain't calling shit. Right. You know, so, like, unless it's an absolutely egregious penalty that you absolutely have to call, they are swallowing their whistles. Yeah. And I hate that because if it's a penalty in the first period, it's a penalty in overtime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, for you to sit there and say, well, you know, and, yeah, you can say, well, they weren't calling it all game. If you look at that play, and what everybody focuses on is after Juju starts to make the turn and, that, and the defender's hand is around his waist. Yeah. And that's what they think is the hold. And the hold is before that. His his progress is impeded. His shirt is pulled visibly. Yeah. Like, it's visibly being pulled by the defender. And he's being jerked and his progress is impeded, which is why the ball is overthrown. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? That's clearly a hold, in my opinion. <laughs> and you've got to make that call. Right. Like, and it, it, so... I wasn't questioning that as much as I was questioning, really, those two other calls. Which really went Philly's way. Yeah, they did. Yeah, you know. So, I mean, like... Like everybody's like, oh, well, the Super Bowl is ruined because the officials made a bad call. What One, it wasn't a bad call. And two, it wasn't ruined. You still had a phenomenal game. Oh, that was a great game, dude. You know. But so, I tell you what, though. And I'm not saying, I mean, Mahomes was phenomenal, right? Yeah. Right? But. Yeah, I mean, Jay, he I He made that, that game, like, I, wow. I was like, I, I was like, I, like. I, I, I always love when Mahomes comes on the field for offense. Yeah. But in this game, I was excited to see... What Jalen Hurts was going to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, like, I was so excited for this kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, man, don't fuck up. You know, yeah. I wasn't rooting for Philly, you know? Yeah. But I... This is the one... Oh, God, I can't believe I'm saying this. This is the one time where I'm like, if they pull it out, I'm okay with it. Well, yeah, I can't stand Philadelphia. Well, neither can I. So it'd be the second time because the first time was against the Patriots. Yeah, well, true. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just I, I feel like this is the amazing thing. Like watching that game, the thing that went through my head is these two teams are light years ahead of the Steelers. Oh yeah, light years ahead of them. Yeah, like. Like I'm, and I mean, like I look at the what the Steelers have, and I think to myself, like, yeah, they have a chance in the division. Yeah, you know, but like I, I can't see. Like, I mean, unless like, okay, like if if everything goes like, if you if you go and you get Joey Porter Jr. and you solidify that secondary, and you like. There's still like so much that like has to like is it in flux with that defense and like there's just stuff that like I feel I feel like if you took the reins off I feel like Kenny Pickett could put up numbers like I feel like that offense holds him back a little bit yeah you know maybe they'll let him flourish a little more in year two under Matt Canada fingers crossed I'm doubting it yeah me too you know. But, like, it's just that thing of, like, watching these two teams play, it was the first time I really thought to myself, like, like, fuck, I I don't see how the Steelers can get to this point. (laughs) You know? Yeah. It's like, I think if you let this kid go, I think Pickett's going to put his numbers up. Yeah. I do. I I really do. Right. If he's not going to put them up, he's going to run to get them up. Yeah, I mean this kid's this kid's pretty good, right? I mean, I his his overthrowing got settled down a little bit. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's hitting numbers. He's reading, you know, like right. His receiver's pretty good. Um, I think this kid's got it, man. I, I think, and he can fire a ball. Yeah. 
Um, and I'm not saying that because I'm a huge fucking Steeler fan, but I'm, right. I'm saying that because, you know, we've been spoiled with Ben for so long. Right. And we're now we're seeing a new type of quarterback in this town. And right. We have to let that mature. Right. You know? I mean, Ben did his share of fucking scrambling, too, and running. Oh, yeah. When he was young. But, like, I just, I look, like, you look at the division, and Baltimore will never scare me. Okay. Like, especially with Lamar Jackson, at quarterback, I'm sorry. He does not scare me. Yeah. Like, you can talk about, like, oh, hey, he's the future, and he's done this, and he's done He ain't done jack shit. Yeah. He's won one fucking playoff game. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And... Even that wasn't all that impressive, right? You know, the Browns are the Browns. You know, they're they're they're. I don't care who they've got at quarterback. You can tell me, you know, yeah, they, they've got you know Watson, and he's this great thing. I ain't impressed. You know what I mean? Yeah. And again, like, I, like quarterbacks, like yeah, we eat for lunch. And then you got the Bengals, and you say, well, the Bengals, oh, well, look at all, all the youth, everything. Well, the Bengals have proven over their history. They don't pay anybody. Yeah. So if you're going to keep, you know, Cool Joe, you want to keep them around, you're going to end up paying them, and they ain't going to pay anybody else. Yeah. Chase and all those other wide receivers, all those guys who are making plays are gone. Yeah. Because they will not pay anybody else. They'll only pay the quarterback. And when the quarterback's the only one getting paid, guess what? Yeah. You stink. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's that <clears throat> thing of, like, I can see us coming back into the vision, but, like... That next level, you mean? That next level between Buffalo and Kansas City, man, that's tough. Like in the in the conference, just trying to beat those two teams is going to be extraordinarily difficult. Yeah, I I have more faith that we can beat Buffalo versus Kansas City. Yeah, but still, I mean, Kansas City is fucking scary. Kansas City reminds me of the fucking Forty ers Kansas back can, in the day, right? Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> like I Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback I have ever seen. Period. Yeah, and like. I'm a Joe Montana fan. Uh -huh. Like, I will tell you to the, you know, I used to tell you to the end of time, like, you know, the best quarterback that's ever played this game is going to be Johnny Unitas. Mm -hmm. You know, but, man, like, Patrick Mahomes, at the when this is all said and done, like, I'm not putting him there right now, but like, when this is all said and done, he may be the greatest of all time. Yeah. Like, and, I mean. And I, you got to think, too, that he went through these fucking these last two games hurt. Yeah. Like, real hurt. Yeah. Not just, like, fucking, I got a sprained ankle. Yeah, like, that 25-yard tw run just damn near killed him. Yeah. At the end of that game. Yeah. But that's also, like... And the thing I love about Patrick Mahomes is he's a guy who's not looking to run the ball until he has to run the ball. Yeah. If you watch Patrick Mahomes play, and this is what I like about... Because there's a difference, I always say, there's a difference between a mobile quarterback and a running quarterback. Patrick Mahomes is a mobile quarterback. He gets out of the pocket, but he's looking downfield to make a play. He knows his bread and butter is throwing the ball. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, he's getting out of the pocket, he's scrambling, he's looking to make a play with his arm until he absolutely has to make a play with his feet. And when he does that, he becomes elusive. Like, Ben used to do that back in the early days. Like, yeah. you know, he'd get out of the pocket, look around, look around, look around, look around. Finally, if there was nothing there, he'd pull it down and run and waddle his way for 30 yards. Yeah. You know, so that's the same thing Mahomes does. Like, Mahomes, even when Mahomes is healthy, when he runs, he looks awkward. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you watch Lamar Jackson run, he looks athletic. When Patrick Mahomes runs, he looks kind of awkward. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's got a, like, a load in his diaper or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, it's a very yeah. odd running style he has. Yeah. But, but, there, but that's the difference. Like, and he he's looking all over the field. Like, he's not just looking directly in front of him. He's looking to the side. He'll find somebody open. He's got the arm strength, which is I've never seen before, to throw the ball across his body to somebody on a dime. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I was talking to this kid in West Virginia. Yeah. And Mahomes 
In college, Mahomes came to West Virginia. Yeah. And they were there during warm-ups. Yeah. And they said, this this guy, not kid, this guy, <clears throat> said they, they had never seen anybody throw like that. No. Ever. Yeah. I mean, ever. Yeah. I mean, like 95 yards. Yeah. Like sick strength. Yeah. Like absolutely sick strength in that arm. Like a beast arm. Yeah. Like, you know, you're lucky if you can get guys that can throw at 70 yards or yeah. 65. Yeah. He can go the whole fucking distance of the field. Yeah. I mean, this guy's got fucking strength. Like, the thing that with Mahomes, though, it's always fine. I find interest, interesting is like, he's got strength and accuracy. Yeah. Which is, I'm blows my it. mind. Like, when Ben threw them fucking ducks, right? Yeah. He depended a lot on his receivers to go up and get those ducks. Yeah. Yeah. Mahomes is putting the ball in position to where they get they can get it. Yeah. He's throwing them open. Exactly. Yeah. And Ben was just hoping, praying. And, like, and he, and not all the time. I'm not saying all the time. Right. But a lot of the times. I mean, I still think, ever... And I've seen some amazing passes from Ben. Yeah. I have. Yeah. But his most amazing passes was to Santoni in the end zone. Yeah. That was like, you can't put a ball more perfectly placed yeah. than that ball. Yeah. And that was that should sum up his entire career. Yeah. I agree. No, really. I mean, yeah. I've seen him, and we've seen him do that yeah. again and again and again. Right. But in that moment, in that spot, and he threw that ball perfectly. Yeah. And it was a f- perfect catch. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. I mean, but that was a that was that was that was fucking crazy. Right. You know. But Mahomes, that's just fucking that's fucking appetizer. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, what I mean, like it's an appetizer for him to do right. shit like that. Do you know what I mean? I, mean, I bet that guy can throw sixty five yards on his knees. I bet you if you throw that if you put that guy yeah. on on his knees, yeah, he's probably throwing sixty five yards. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. No sweat. That's how much arm strength that guy has. I mean, I've seen him throw a rocket, no look passes. Yeah. Like he's looking to his right and he throws it to his left and it's a fucking laser. Yeah, I know. You know. And then it's always funny to hear the announcers too. Yeah. When 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 he comes up to the line and does that shovel pass, Ben's like, Hold my beer. Yeah. Because Ben's been doing that yeah. his entire career. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And home Mahomes does it as yeah. well. Oh yeah. He knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? He, he, he has a he has the a high a high football IQ. Yeah, he's got you know all the talent in the world. Like it's it's amazing, and it's like yeah, you take away Tyreek Hill, but he's still going to take the guys that he has. Oh, like what I'm saying, like Juju Smith Schuster is a good wide receiver, a yeah. very a very good wide receiver when he's not but injured, he, right? But he makes him look great. <clears throat> oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's where Juju needed to go. Yeah. Because a lot of our receivers don't get anything when they leave the Steelers. Yeah. In the past. Right. Um, they just don't. No. Um, but, Ask uh, Antoine Randall well about that. God, he should have stayed in. Yeah. What a, what a great slot receiver. Yeah. Um, but, um, but, yeah, you're right. He does make him look good. Yeah. Like the only guy he doesn't need to make look good is Kelsey. Kelsey's like the guy. See, that's the thing that b- bewilders me every single time I watch Kansas City play. Wide fucking open. How in God's earth yeah. is Kelsey open? Yeah. Every fucking time he catches the ball, he's, it's like he's wide open. Yeah, there's somebody around there for like five yards. How... How? Yeah. How? Yeah. And when you come up with a defensive game plan, yeah, like you've got to be saying, like you got to know where eighty-seven hits at all times. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, just like, just like offense is going on Troy Polamalu, you got to know where Troy's at all the time. Yeah, you have to know. Yeah, like he's got to be your first key. Like I have to know where forty-three is. Yeah, you yeah. got to know. Yeah, where where he's at. Yeah. Same with Kelch. You got to know. You got to have him covered. Yeah. I mean, how does this? I, I, I'm sure some of its ability and stuff like that. Yeah. But 
Still. These safeties and corner. I mean, these these guys can cover Kelchi. Yeah. How does this guy end up wide open? Yeah. Every it's, single time. It's not like like you used to watch Gronk would make like a great catch. <laughs> yeah. Like with somebody like trying to cover him. Like there's nobody around Kelsey at all. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's not like he's pulling one handers out of the air. No. It's fucking in the bread basket. Yeah. He just stands there and like it's like playing pitch and catch. Exactly. How yeah. does this guy wide open all the time? Yeah. How do you not account for this yeah. guy? It's amazing. It is. It's he's, a, he's a great tight end. Yeah. I'm not going to take anything away from him. Yeah. But, and yeah, I've seen him make good catches. Yeah. But like 95% of the time, it's like he's like, there's nobody around him for five or 10 yards. I mean, he's no Eric Green. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Eric Green. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's no Betty Cunningham. <laughs> All right. No, but I just, I, I don't get it. Yeah. I just do not get it. Yeah. I, I can't fathom. I mean, I think it's great for Kansas City. Oh, obviously, yeah. But, I mean, that guy can catch. Yeah. But what I like about Mahomes going in that Tyreek Hill left, right? Yeah. Okay. He just fucking Brady'd that whole offense. Yeah. Because that's what Brady does. Yeah. Brady's like, whoever's open. Yeah. Whoever I see yeah. is going to get the ball. I mean, that's, that's why. That's why, other than Kelsey, you can't pick up a, a Kansas City wide receiver. Because mm-hmm. you never know who's going to be the guy on any given day. Right. You don't know. You can't double yeah. somebody when he's going right. to throw. He has, but like in, fa- in fantasy football, you cannot pick up a Kansas City wide receiver. Because, I tried. Yeah. Because you're, you're thinking to yourself, well, it's Patrick Mahomes, but there's no one single guy other than Kelsey that you can say is going to get five catches a game. Yeah, he's going to toss that rock he'll, around. He'll, he'll throw to seven different people. Yeah. All of them will have three catches. You don't know who the guy, and maybe once in a while, like a guy like like Juju will have a game where he has six or seven catches and a touchdown. Like that doesn't happen very often in their system, right? Like he's throwing the running backs, tight end. Like they're throw, they, they have they rotate guys in and out. Like they just don't fuck around. Pretty, it's a pretty good coach. Yeah. Yeah, Andy Reid's a pretty good coach. Yeah, yeah. That's no shit. Hard to believe. Like think about the. Andy Reid was hired the same year Bill Cower was. Crazy, right? Yeah. Like, and if you look at like that class, like that year, like, cause that was like, that was the year Cower got hired by the Steelers. Um, once that was hired by Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, Andy Reid with Kansas City with uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. Um. Another guy, I can't remember. Another guy from the Cowboys. I think he went to the Redskins. Like, there was like four or five guys that were hired the same as first time head coaches. Mm. First time head coaches the same year Andy Reid was. None of them are coaching in the NFL right now. Yeah. Only Andy Reid. And I I think Cower would have, if he would have decided to coach. Well, I mean, okay. He, like, even when he left the Steelers, like there was a a few years where there was like he he wants to coach the Giants. Like he liked living in New York. He wanted to get back into football, but he he didn't want to take a job from uh, Tom uh, Tom Call. Tom, I can't remember what his name was. The coach, the guy was a coach at the time. Uh-huh. Uh, he didn't want to take his job, mm. so he's like, you know. He has expressed interest apparently internally, but he wasn't going to take the job away from the guy. And the Giants were like, we'll, we'll, we'll take Bill Cowher any day of the week. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. but he didn't do it. And then I think like a time passed and then he was like, yeah, I don't want to coach anymore. You know, you know that fire still in him. I don't think so. No. I, I think at this point, Bill Cowher is very happy doing what he does. Yeah. I do. Like, he doesn't have to deal with, like, the Monday through Friday of the NFL. Like, I'm, I'm sure he probably watches game film. I'm sure, like, during the season, in the off season, he's watching stuff and, you know, being prepared and, and stuff like that. But I think overall, like, there's a difference between, like, getting ready for, like, the NFL today on CBS. Yeah. And getting ready to play yeah. the Ravens on Sunday afternoon. 
you know, there's a huge difference in your time. And I think at this, he's reached a point now where, like, he's like, you know, my kids are grown. I live in New York City. I got a hot wife who's a rock star. I'm living a good life. Yeah. yeah. You know. I get you. Yeah. You think we're going to get Porter Jr.? I don't know. Like, I'm hoping so. Like, I know, like, people will tell me, like, oh, they need offensive line help. They need defensive line help. You know, but I'm telling you now, I honestly believe you put Joey Porter Jr. on one side and Cam Sutton on the other with Micah Fitzpatrick at safety, you have a shutdown secondary. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that defensive line gets better. Yeah. Because of it. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just that thing of, like, I, I just I, I don't see how you pass up a talent like that if he's if they're available. You think they'll trade up to try to get him? I don't think they're gonna have to trade up. I've seen a, quite a few mock drafts that have him going at seventeen. Really? Yeah. Huh. Like I asked the thing. It's like you know, if you don't have to trade, I, I, I wouldn't be a big fan of them trading up unless it's like. Cause I think the, the the great thing would be like if you could pick at seventeen and again at thirty two, with with that Bears pick that you got for uh, what's his name? Chase. Yeah, Chase Chase Claypool. Man, that's like having two first round drafts. I, mean, I know thirty two this year is considered the beginning of the second round, but it's still like let's face facts. That's a first round draft pick. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I I feel like you could get you could get two young studs. Yeah, you, know, you get it that. You, if you if you can get Joey Porter Jr., that's phenomenal at seventeen, and then you get yourself, you know, that young stud tackle at thirty two, mm-hmm. you know, and then maybe you're looking defensive line or or middle linebacker with your your second for second round pick. Yeah, you know, like I I feel like, it, <laughs> but I just, I feel like. Joey Porter Jr. is that guy that just solidifies that secondary. And once that secondary is really solidified, like then all of a sudden you can compete with a Kansas City a little bit more. Yeah, you deep, have a shutdown secondary. Because you have a shutdown secondary. You yeah. know that once you're taking away that, you know that I mean, you know now the pass rush is getting there. Now you know everything else is kind of working a little bit more, and, and now you're a much more ferocious defense. And one guy does that for you in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, we've seen that. Yeah. I mean... Can you... Especially with him and... Well, like... I mean, you think back to, like, Ike Taylor. is, is And people, like, bag on Ike Taylor because he had, like, almost no interceptions. Yeah. Hands of stone. But he was a shutdown corner. Yeah. In all other terms, he shut down. Is the, only, the only reason people threw his way is because they knew he couldn't catch the ball. Yeah. Like his hands were cursed. Yeah. But he he battled away so many passes. Like he he played such solid defense. He shut down the best in the business. Like you put Ike Taylor shut down Terrell Owens at Terrell Owens peak. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and you look at what the rest of that defense was doing. And part of that was because you had a guy like Ike Taylor in your backfield yeah. shutting it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So man, was that defense good? Yeah. I mean, you get Ryan Clark, you got Troy, you know Willie Gay, you got all, all those other pieces. I mean, Troy was a big part of that. You could do shit with that defense that nobody else could do because you had a talent in Troy that could stand at the line of scrimmage and get back twenty yards deep in, in like a heartbeat. Yeah, you know what I mean. But that def that like. The defensive line and those linebackers were so good, and they knew they were going to have the time to get to the quarterback because that secondary was so good. Right. Well, if you give T.J. Watt one extra second, if you give Highsmith one extra second, yeah, which is all they need, this is now all of a sudden you're talking about a record-breaking defense with sacks. Yeah, yeah. For sure. You know what I mean? So. We'll see. Yeah. When's the draft? April. Yeah, end of April, yeah. It'll be interesting. It will be. Yeah. 
Well, let's uh, step away from football, but go to the other big attraction on Sunday. The movie trailers. Yeah, let's do it. A couple of big ones. Yeah. First off, let's start with the one we opened the show with. The Flash. It looks amazing. I have never seen a trailer so good, it made me forget somebody abducted people. (laughs) I know. Like it's it like, did. You <laughs> fucking stupid ass. Yeah. Like, I'm literally watching that going, fuck, this looks amazing. I can't wait to. Oh, that's right. Ezra Miller's a scumbag. Allegedly. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, it's like, holy hell. Like, fuck, that looked good. Yeah. So, I mean, so Keaton. Oh, I mean, Keaton. Yeah, I mean, Keaton looks so fucking good. It's funny when you put that mask on. Yeah. It doesn't even look like he's aged. I know. <laughs> you know I know. I mean? It's like... And you know what he like, looks like, right? Yeah. And it's 1989 all over again. It, it's so weird, right? Yeah. It's like you put that mask on, it's like... Wow, man. Yeah. That's crazy. It is. <laughs> oh. It looks so fucking good. It does. Like, really good. Yeah. Yeah, I was, like, blown away. I was like, that's what I want to see. Yeah, I mean, it looks so epic yeah. in scale. Yeah. Like, I can't wait to see where it goes and how it ends. As weird as that is to say, like, the ending of that movie is just as important to me as, like, how the movie actually plays out. Right. You know? And We'll see. Yeah. Who knows? It could be a fucking bomb. Oh, it could. It absolutely could. But James Gunn has gone on record saying it's one of the best superhero movies he's ever seen. Really? Yeah. And I mean, and I feel like he's in a spot where he owes this movie nothing. No, he doesn't. He could shit on this movie all he wants to if he wanted to. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and he came out and he was like, yeah, it's it's one of the best superhero movies I've ever seen. Wow. So you know it's going to be dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it's got an amazing soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, you can see Gun watching it being like, yeah, I would have chose that song. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect song choice for this part. Because <laughs> I tell you what, man, that guy can fucking pick his music. Yeah. You know? Crazy. Yeah. Every movie he does it soundtrack's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean I mean I mean even like I mean the soundtrack was so fucking good the fucking Peacemaker. Yeah. All that metal. Yeah. All that Dude. Hair, oh yeah. I mean Peacemaker has a great soundtrack. It does. It's ridiculous. It is, and he pulls them out of the woodwork. Yeah. He I mean does. deep cuts. Yeah. Well, I mean you think about Guardians too. Guardians, Guardians. those were deep cuts on yeah. AM radio. Oh yeah. That was all AM radio bullshit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, the shit we grew up listening, like, sugar. Da, 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 da. I can't believe that wasn't in one of yeah. those movies. Yeah. But that's the kind of crap that was that right. he plays in the movies. It's yeah. like, holy smokes. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, the trailer fantastic. Yeah, I mean, who would have ever Keaton thought Hooked? Hooked amazing. Who would have ever thought Hooked on a Feeling would ever make a comeback? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> So it is ridiculous, yeah. you know. But you know, it's funny. Well, there's been numbers of songs in his movies that are yeah. absolutely fantastic. But it's just so weird how, yeah, he's put them back into, yeah, mainstream, yeah. But to cap all the Guardians movies, Uga Chaga, that's like yeah, fucking. How do I describe it? It was perfect placement of a song. Yeah. Of like, what was going on in the time of But also how that like was happening. In that trailer. Like that trailer was probably the perfect trailer. Cuz it was at that time it was the one movie we were all like yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. I don't know about this. And when that trailer hit with Hooked on a Feeling I was like, 
this is fucking brilliant. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is, I'm in. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was a, so, like, you're right. I mean, James Gunn does have, like, an amazing talent for, like, picking the right song for the right moment. I still say that I feel that Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the best Marvel movies ever made. Yo, oh, yeah, the first one. The first one was yeah, absolutely. Un, un, yeah. unfucking believable. Yeah. The team building, who they got, how they got there, what happened, what they did. The villain. John C. Riley, even. Yeah. I mean, everything about that movie was good. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. To the end. Holding of the hands. Yeah. Lee Pace. Yeah. Everything in that, everything. In the, in that fucking movie was good. Yeah. Tie in to Thanos. Yeah. I mean, everything was like. And that was perfectly. Yeah, I, I, it's one of the best movies Marvel ever made. Yeah, thanks to Gunn. Yeah, you know, two wasn't that bad. No, I like two a lot. Yeah, more heartfelt in two. Yeah, than in one. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think two whole. I mean, I we we forgive two a little bit. I think like it gets a little kooky, which you expect from Gunn. Mm. But at the same time, you you for, end up forgiving it because of you know, you know I'm Mary Poppins, y'all, and you know he he may be your father, but he ain't your daddy. Yeah, like that that shit is like just breaks your heart. Like you it know. does, and like through all the Marvel movies, yeah, you know, you think of moments, yeah, in those movies, yeah, Cap. Fixing himself. Yeah. The shield. Yeah. Sam talking to him. Yeah. You know, these are moments in these movies, right? Right. But when he comes out and was like, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Instant tear factor. Yeah. You know? And then like the whole thing in space was just like. Yeah. My mind exploded. Yeah. Like, you know, and I, I get and emotional he, in movies. Right, so do I. You know? Yeah. I'm not afraid to admit I sally up. But, I think I cried the entire end of that movie. And then you throw on top of it. When like, they, oh. The, the, when, the brilliant choice of the Cat Stevens song. Oh. And then, you know, the Ravagers showing up to get oh. the Oh, yeah. Just kills me. The whole, the whole way. Yeah. I'm like, I could not stop yeah. crying. Yeah. I'm like, I even, like, in the movie, I can remember going, oh, they showed up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're here. Yeah. And then the Cat Stevens song, it's like, it's fucking blowing my mind right now. I, I, yeah. I'm not going to be right for, like, three or four days here. Yeah. You know? Which makes you wonder, like, going to the next uh, I trailer. I can't. I, for every, Guardians 3. Dude, every time I fucking watch the trailer, I cry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... Every time I watch the trailer, I'm fucking tearing up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, when you see Gunn going, no. Yeah. I start tearing up. Oh. I mean, like, the whole thing is just, it just looks so fucking catastrophic. It does. That, I don't know if I can come back from it. Yeah. I I'm, mean, that's the way I look at that trailer. I was like, I don't know if I can come back from this movie. Because, you know, it's funny. He's created. He has created these characters that you absolutely love. Yeah. Each and every one of them. Right. It's not like you have these sub characters, or you know, you're watching a movie about war or whatever, and the guy dies. You know. Yeah. Expect. Yeah. But you absolutely love these characters. Yeah. From Drax down to Rocket to. Peter to yeah Gamora to you yeah. know what I mean like you love these characters yeah. even what's her name um Karen Gillan yes yeah. I mean you even love her yeah you know what I mean like you you you're invested Mantis yeah <clears throat> and he has done that yeah he's he has done that he he has created these characters that you absolutely fall in love with do you know yeah. what I mean yeah and you actually care. If they die. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even feel that emotional connect in Avengers. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. 
I mean, I did a little bit when Black Widow went down. That was pretty rough. Yeah. But not as rough as... Not as rough as when uh, Yondu died. No. You even like Yondu, for Christ's sake. Yeah. He's, he's like... He's... I don't know. It's I don't know how to describe it. He's he's made a perfect series of movies. Yeah. So far. And within Guardians. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. And it's just crazy. That's the sign of a good director. Yeah. You know. So I'm I'm, I'm very intrigued to see how three goes and like how devastating it's going to be. Oh. I tell you what. I'm bringing tissues. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am. Yeah. For real. I'm getting extra fucking napkins. Yeah. Because I... <laughs> I'm not going to bring tissues, but I'll have napkins. Yeah. And, uh... And to prepare myself going in. Yeah. Because it's going to be rough on me. Oh, yeah. Because I, I love this series. Yeah. I just... And I was so skeptical in the beginning. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I just absolutely fell in love with these characters. Yeah. Even the Christmas special was good. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Fucking crazy. You know what yeah. I mean? So, anyway. All right, moving on. More trailers. Good. Well, those were the two big ones. I I, I don't think there was anything else that I was like... I know they did a, a TV trailer for Indiana Jones, but it didn't show anything really new. And then... I still sally up on that. Oh, yeah. Just seeing Sala just yeah. gets me every day. Oh, yeah. Just the music. Yeah, right? Like, you just hear, need to hear, like, that little dun dun dun. Like, even, like, like slowed down. It's like. Yeah, I yeah. thought the slow down part was great. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I get that. But, like, later on in the week, they did release a trailer for uh, John Wick Chapter 4. I didn't see that. You didn't? No. Ooh. How good is that? It looks good. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's good. It looks good. <laughs> you know? It's going to be fucking yeah. good, dude. There was also a... There was one they released this week for uh, Creed 3. I didn't watch that. How, how did it look? I t- actually turned my head. I was like, oh. Stallone's it, not in. Oh, it didn't show it, it, like, it didn't show anything like really new mm. per se but it gave it more of a sense of urgency okay like you know it explained a little it did explain a little bit apparently Adonis has been away from the fight game for three years okay you know and now you know his friend is back, and now he's got to fight his friend. I, I'm not quite sure it's all going to lead to that. I'm sure there's going to be shenanigans and fuckery, but like it's like just that thing of like, okay, I can't wait to see where this goes. It'll probably be good. I'm sure. Same director, right? No, this is directed by Michael B. Jordan. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because I what's his name? The guy who directed the first two Creeds. He, I think he. Couldn't direct because he was directing Wakanda forever. Mm. Which takes precedence. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's a payday. That's a payday. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. But, uh. (laughs) Creed or Wakanda? Hmm, Let me think Mm, on that. Yeah. Marvel Universe. Yeah. A good movie. Ah, Marvel Universe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame any director for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But yeah, I mean, I mean, Creed Luke Three looks very, very good. I, 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 I like. What do you think of the uh, commercials? There wasn't anything that like stood out. The only one that stood out for me was. Ben Affleck fucking Duncan Dennis. Yeah, that, that was, was good. That was pretty funny. And I like the Alicia Silverstone one, too. Yeah. That's, yeah. I share. That was good. Yeah. But, like, outside of that, there was nothing that I sat there and said, oh, wow, that was fucking brilliant. Like, I feel like... I feel like Super Bowl commercials are, like, 
overdone. Okay. Like, they're trying too hard yeah. to, like, make that moment, and it's not happening anymore. I, I get that. No, I understand that. You know what I mean? But I, I did like the Ben Affleck one. Yeah. I mean, that was a good commercial. I'm a Ben Affleck fan. Yeah, so am I. Friend of the show, Ben Affleck. Yeah. You know, him and Matty Damon. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but it, it, but it's like, I mean, that, yeah, that was pretty funny. And like you said, the Alicia Silverstone was pretty funny. But like, nothing like jumps out and like makes me go like, what was that? Was there a trailer for a Matty Damon, Ben Affleck movie? I don't think so. I don't recall that. There's a new movie that they're doing. Well, yeah, yeah, the, the, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that was um, the one about um, Nike, Jordan, Jordan, yeah, yeah, the, the Air Jordans, yeah. I'm in it. Oh yeah, I'm in. Yeah, just the two of them in a movie together. Yeah. Oh I'm, yeah, I'm but I mean, like, it looks pretty interesting. It does. And Jordan didn't sign off on this movie. From my understanding. Yeah. He was like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, thank you. Right. But, uh, but yeah. it's not from his aspect. I mean, no. It's not from it, his it's, point it's, of view. It's, it's, a, it's about Nike. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, that did look interesting. About the shoes. Yeah. Yeah, that did look interesting. Because I remember... If you go back to, like, Showtime, that show, there's a moment where, like... Phil Knight is trying to sell Magic Johnson on Nike. Mm. And he's like, you're a running shoe. You're not a basketball shoe. He's like, well, we're trying to get into the basketball game. And he's like, yeah. And he ends up signing with, you know, Magic signs with Converse. But, uh, but so, like, it was, like that laid, like, the groundwork for that, you know. Yeah, yeah. In a way. But, uh, I mean, Affleck a- a- like is Phil Knight. Like, come yeah, on. Right. You know. I mean, so yeah, I mean yeah, that, that that did look interesting to me. I forgot about that. But yeah, that was that was about it. Yeah, that was about it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So um. Well, yeah, that's about it for the Super Bowl then. I think we covered it all. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. There was something else I had here, real quick. All right. Um. Oh yeah, that's right. Bill Waterston. Okay. That name should be familiar to you. He created the greatest comic strip of all time, Calvin and Hobbes. Okay. Okay. He has come out of retirement. And he has a book that's coming out. Okay. Um, the book is titled The Mysteries. The official synopsis describes it's an illustrated book as a fable for grown-ups that takes place in a kingdom where disasters keep happening. The king of the realm sends out a team of knights to investigate, but only one returns years later. Okay. I'm very intrigued by this. Okay. Like... Like I said, Calvin Hobbes to me is the greatest comic strip of all time. One of Ryan Bonney's favorite. Yeah. Speaking of, yeah. But, and it's that thing of like, unlike so many others that just kind of continue and continue and continue, like, he stopped. Yeah, he was done. He reached an end point. He's like, I've said everything I had to say about this. Yeah. And, I mean, if you look back and you look at, you know, 10 years of Calvin and Hobbes. That's all it ran for, 10 years. Yeah. Like, and you look back at those 10 years and what he wrote, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's profound. Which is an odd thing to say about a comic strip, but, like, he really tapped something there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and... Like, for him to go, like, radio silence right, for 25-plus years 
and to have something new to say is very interesting to me. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's like I my, do too. I mean, yeah. I, I like Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, like it's like my level. The writing of, was good. Yeah, like my level of respect for him to like walk away. Right. Like and no, like and Calvin and Hobbes was like never merchandised. Right. You're right. Like you see those stickers of like Calvin pissed on like the Cowboys logo or some shit. That's not endorsed by Bill Waterston. Yeah. You know that's bootleg shit that people sell. Yeah. Like. There was never any merchandising for Calvin and Hobbes you're at right. all. You're right. You're right. Like, and I, was, I watched a documentary on this, and he talked about it. And he was like, yeah, we were going to do a, a Hobbes doll at one point, but I didn't like it, so I just shit canned it. <laughs> nice. Like, that could have been millions of dollars in merchandising. Right. You know, just for a, a, a Hobbes doll. Yeah. I would have killed for a Hobbes doll. And I was a fucking adult. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. But... No, he was having none of that. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. So, like, for him to, like, just, like, walk away from the game and be like, yeah, I'm done. I've... Say what I had to say. Yeah. Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, like, to have something new coming out, I, I just, I find the whole thing very interesting. That is kind of exciting. Yeah. I agree. And especially with, like, it's not even Calvin Hobbes related. Yeah, yeah. Something completely different. Completely different. Yeah. You know? Well, his writing was always good, so we'll see what, I, you know. His writing always felt adult, even for a comic strip. Mm. I guess the great thing about it, like, I mean, you, you read Calvin and Hobbes, and you're like, this isn't, like... It's meant for kids, but it's not meant for kids. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there, there's, like, if you read it, you're, you're, there's more underneath the surface commenting on politics and life and religion and all this other shit. But there's also, like, you know, a funny comic strip. Right. But there's more to it. I, I, he was just so fucking brilliant. Yeah. It'll be interesting to it see. It will. Like, I can't, I can't. When's can't, it come out? I got, let me look here. Um, the mysteries was set but set to publish on October tenth, twenty twenty three. Cool. Check out the Simon and Schuster website for more details. I I love this line. Like he said, um, in twenty ten for the fifteenth anniversary of the last Calvin and Hobbes strip, he spoke to the plain dealer about his decision to end the strip, saying, "By the end of ten years, I'd pretty much." I said pretty much everything I had I had come there to say, it's always better to leave the party early. Yeah. Like and yet to this day somebody's still writing a Beale Bailey and Hagar the horrible comic strip. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Bill Waters was like, Yeah, fuck it, I'm done. Yeah. I'm retiring these characters, I'm taking them with me. So I'm looking forward to that. Like I, 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 I gotta like look that up, and I'm gonna. I, that might be something I actually pre-order. <laughs> nice. You know. It sounds good though. It does. It sounds. It sounds very interesting, and I think it'd be awesome if at the end of it it's just Calvin and Hobbes playing. Yeah. Like that's you read this whole book, and at the end of it it's just Calvin and Hobbes <laughs> playing like D and D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh... That's it. That's all I got. Is there anything like to add to the proceedings there, sir? No, I'm good. All right. Well, remember, there's a number of ways you can reach out and uh, touch us. You can send an email like Thad does each and every week. And that email address is pittsburghnerd at yahoo.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Just search Pittsburgh Nerd. We're very, very easy to find. And we are also on a number of podcasting networks. You can find us on the Tangent Bound Network, the Weeby Geeks Network, and the Pod Breed Network. Uh, just give them a Google search and you'll find all the other great podcasts they have to offer. 
And lastly, as always, I want to thank you, dear listener, for checking us out each and every week. We can't thank you enough for your support. Yeah. And so on that note, the dreamer has awakened. Peace. <laughs>